Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Kingdom Rush by Lucky Duck Games and Ironhide Games Studios. This is a one to four player game that takes about 45 minutes to an hour for each scenario. It is roughly ages 12 and up, and in the game it is based off of the popular hit IP uh, Kingdom Rush. It is a mobile app game, tower defense, in which you're going to be placing towers down on a map following a path. The path is going to be littered with monsters that are trying to get from one side of the map to the other side of the map in attempts to deal damage to your tower or your castle. And if you can get there or they can get there, you will take damage and utterly be defeated. Utilize your towers and certain blocks or bricks along the board to attempt to cover them up, dealing damage to them, removing them from the game. Everybody's going to get their own character as well as their own unique abilities and towers that you can level up. You'll be trading towers back and forth, placing them, attacking enemies, moving your character and doing damage to enemies with your specials, moving those enemies across the board, spawning new ones, and attempting to complete unique objectives in each scenario that you go through. The game can be played in a one shot or you can do scenario based gameplay kind of like Descent or Dungeon Crawl where you go from one to another to another and you'll be placing down stickers on a map. In this video I'm going to show you what the game looks like, what it comes with in the base game, how it plays, and then I'll tell you my review of the base game. It does have expansion content, a bunch of extra stuff you can get as you can get, or you might have already gotten, and then you guys can let me know what you think about the game, whether you guys want to pick it up, and of course uh, there'll be a link down below in the description for you guys to take a look at Kingdom Rush by Lucky Duck Games. Let's go and take it down below, and then my review. Welcome to the game Kingdom Rush, and everything included in the base game. Now, I'm leaving out some things because there's extra scenario components, such as these map pieces, as well as extra little spaces here that we've provided for the baddies. But for the most part, here's what you're going to get. You're going to get enough tiles for placement for the different scenarios in the game. And we have the first scenario set up here. And you're also going to get all this stuff here. And we're going to go ahead and do it in separate little batches here. The first thing is the different towers. There are four main towers, Bombard, Militia, Archer, and Mage. And these guys can be upgraded. And as you go up this path here, they will be upgraded from rank one, two, three, and then finally four. And there's two different types of the four level four tiles. Now uh, you're also going to be getting character abilities. These will go on to your ability spaces on your board presented here based on the scenario. Some will not be using these, others will be. These are extra characters as well as their cards and bosses, some unique character bosses as well are um, going to be over here. And these are the extra characters in the game. This is a two-player game, so I've set up for two players. You have the archer and the sorcerer here, and the archer has a little cute pet cat. This is based on the scenario booklet, which comes in this little guy here. When you open it up, it will tell you what the scenario should look like. And as you can see right here, it is replicated over here, and based on the number of players will be on the right-hand side of each of the different scenarios. I've set it up so as you can see, purple has these little see-through plastic uh, board squares, which will be placing on the map, which will represent where they can place their towers. The number of minions presented on the map, this is the spawn deck, which will tell you how in the rules how you set this guy up here, but this is where the minions are going to spawn from, and they're going to try to make their way down this little pathway here to your base. This is how much money you have, and of course you'll have health as well, based number of players. Each player is going to get a character board, get a certain amount of health, get certain abilities, certain uh, useful cards that they can activate their characters when they place these guys here and their basic attacks the turn sequence and what you start with and we have starting towers here so i went ahead and placed them right here extra bosses extra boss cards extra player cards extra spawn cards and then these over here are all the different weaponry you can use in the game these are also additional player boards it comes with three other ones and like i said before the bosses here and that's pretty much what you're going to get other than the campaign page. So you'll have this map here that you can pull out. And as you complete each of the different rifts in time, you will be moving across this map. And this is for all the expansions as well. So the base game is going to have this green area here, but there are three other ones that you can choose to pick up if you want. Uh, and as you go through this map here, you'll be putting stickers down as you complete them. And they can range from one, two, and three stickers, depending on how well you do in the game. So the better you do, the more stickers you're going to be placing down, moving from scenario to scenario. Then let's talk about now what 
the game is like, how it plays. The first thing that happens is you're going to spawn um, enemy hordes, and you won't do that for the first round of the game. It's different for every scenario. In this case, it's already represented here, and these little bases here have a little circle in the middle, a little cut in the middle, so you can go ahead and flip these over, which will then represent the baddies. The baddies will always be placed facing downward towards the exit, so you always have this little line here representing basically that they need to go that way, in that direction here. And of course, it's different for every single scenario. And as these guys move, they'll be going down this track like this. So we're ignoring these spawn enemies. We're going to then go ahead and place our tower and hero cards, or play our cards, okay? Uh, one thing we can do is we can go ahead and pass these guys to another player. Uh, thusly, they can choose to upgrade these on the next round, but you will lose the ability to utilize them on this round. You can also place them down on your specific tower location. So I can go ahead and place these guys here if I wanted to. And I can then utilize these during gameplay. So I have my Bombard Mage and Archer. This guy over here, the green one, is going to go ahead and place these guys along this line here. Maybe I even orientate them correctly so that I actually can do damage to these guys. Because how you orientate these specific buildings will make a huge difference in gameplay. After you've gone ahead and placed all these towers down on the specific spaces, you can also go ahead and choose to activate your characters. You'll take your character cards here, you'll place them down on this little character space here, which will let you move with them and then take one action. It can be a basic action, a special action, or you can recover if you have been down the previous round. Basically, you kind of lose a turn and then you can come back on the next round. Uh, moving characters will allow you to move them onto boards. So if you can go from one space to another based on your movement, you can cover up certain spaces, which will have you defeat enemies. Very important. Basically, when you cover the enemies up, you will then defeat them. Uh, you're also going to go ahead and utilize your towers based on the direction in which they're going to be pointing and the type of weaponry you'll be utilizing. You will go into the specific baggie of weaponry. So for instance, if I wanted to attack this area here, because I can with the arrow, I would then go ahead and take out one of the two archery little symbols here, and I could place it down on the board there, covering up baddies, because you want to cover up these board trays if you can. It will give you victory points to spend on new towers and will also stop you from taking damage. So moving along on these boards is very important. You can also use your little cat minion if you're playing with the archer, as well as utilizing things like militia. There are also militia towers. They represent similar, similar to how the damage tiles work. Uh, they're going to be these little meeple guys. You can place them down on the board when you can defeat little trays. If you don't defeat them based on whether they are there or they exist or not, they can slow down trays. So can your character characters at a suffer, but they suffer damage. So if you cannot cover a tray completely, then you'll suffer damage. Uh, based on which characters are there, all these little guys will always take damage. And if they do, they simply will perish uh, your little basic minions here. After you've played all of your cards, you've passed them to upgrade, and you've chosen to activate your characters and attack, then you're going to check to see if you've covered any trays up. So for instance, if I had covered this tray up, we'll just pretend like I did, I would then go ahead and take this tray out, I'd flip this over, I'd gain the reward crystal on the back, and I would move this out of the game. And then after that, you are going to advance horde trays. When you advance them, you'll advance them one space, unless it says otherwise some character, some of them will move farther than others. This would get displaced. This would get removed. She would take a damage and this would go through damaging that tower. You'll take a certain amount of damage based on what you have on this tray here and uh, it can be over really quickly if you're not really careful. So uh, this, this is how they're going to move. After that, then you are going to simply pick up, or sorry, you're going to advance your, uh, advance your horde trays. You're going to pick up your towers and hero cards. You'll pick up all of these as well as you'll take these guys off of your player board to be used for next round. And then you can go ahead and spend your crystals. Whatever crystals you gained from the previous round and the start of the game, you will then be able to spend two and three crystals to buy these uh, separately. The rank one is for two crystals, the rank two is for uh, three crystals. Getting these guys here and these guys here will involve you upgrading, trading towers with other players. When you trade towers with other players, so for instance, if Purple didn't want to use this archer on the board or didn't need to, uh, he or she might pass it to Elaria Swiftwind, placing it in the incoming tower area. And then the next round, they'd be able to upgrade it to marksman so it'd be for a free upgrade basically at the cost of not utilizing this uh tower during gameplay 
then the round is going to rinse and repeat. You'll spawn new hordes based on the amount of spawners. You'll start with the uh, single spawn, then the number two, the number three, the number four, and they might have separate decks, they might have the same deck, and you'll spawn them. And in this case, you're actually going to spawn two from the same deck, and you're going to place them on these bases here. You'll put them down the map, and then if there's ever any spaces that are covered, you're simply going to take it and place it on the next farthest. So these guys can actually get to the end if you're not careful. Then you're going to go ahead and play your tower and hero cards, and you rinse and repeat in the game. Now, there's a ton of stuff in this game. I just want to give you the basic idea of how it worked, the fact that you're able to move your characters, utilize your towers, upgrade them by spending or by trading them, and uh, going and using special abilities and or uh, the ability to buy towers. Very, very important. Uh, if the scenario calls for it, uh, you're going to be winning by defeating certain rift cards. There's certain ones that are purple in here that can only be defeated in certain ways, and if you do not defeat them, you'll lose the game. They have certain requirements on them. Some of them move faster, some of them can't be hurt by heroes, some of them can't be uh, damaged by certain types of attacks, so the resistance to physical or to ranged or whatever, uh, magic, so on and so forth, and they get more challenging as the game goes on. Based on the scenario booklet, like I said before, there will be a victory condition, how to set the map up, depending on the number of players, how to win the game, and how to set up these different spawn decks throughout the game as well. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple as far as it goes. Utilizing these different uh, tacks will give you uh, specific types of weaponry, these little uh, squares or triangles or, or whatever it might be. Placing them on the board, the best of your ability. You can place them, as long as you can reach, you can place it on the board and try and cover it up as much as possible. And utilizing what you have and what your, uh, your allies have, because it's fully cooperative, is the most important thing. Uh, just trying to survive the uh, waves of enemies that are oncoming. And if you manage to succeed, you can then move on to the next scenario. And like I said before, there are additional campaigns or there's additional little one-shots that you can set up yourself and play this game, which allows for unlimited replayability with just what you have here, not including the expansions. Okay, so I think I gave you a good idea of what the game is like, how it functions. Uh, let's come up and discuss the game a little more, I'll talk about some unique abilities, like the fact that these guys will move twice and that kind of thing, different characters and whatnot. And then after that, you can go ahead and pick up the game for yourself if you'd like. So I know that I've reviewed this in the past, but now that I've got better quality, I have the actual game in front of me, no longer the prototype, and it plays a little different than that one, I wanted to kind of give a refresher on the game here, give you guys my take on it. I know I previously explained it, but here we go once again, just because I felt like doing it. Kingdom Rush is based off of the popular IP. I played the heck out of the original Kingdom Rush on mobile, I have a tablet, and I was just going through it, and this, uh, of course, made me want to play the game once again. We played this with a single player, myself, and I played with me and Callie, and I played it with a four-player variant of the game, uh, and they all work pretty well. Uh, they're, of course, extremely challenging. That's the first thing I want to say about this game is it's challenging. You need to really work together cooperatively to determine where you should place things, where you should place your units, how you should place them, who takes damage, when and where, what you should trade, when you should trade, because... If you don't, if you're not careful, you're going to suffer from the reset. And the reset is basically dealing with these purple guys here. When you damage these guys with a tower, that tower is going to go away. And certain uh, types of these cards here will require certain levels of towers to even deal with them. Your units can't even mess with them, so you have to utilize towers. And when you do, those towers will get trashed, in which case you've lost that tower, and you have to then regain those towers throughout the missions, which is basically how they do the difficulty in this game. Uh, you're either going to hate that, or you're going to love that idea. Basically, you've progressed your tower up to a certain point, you can then utilize it to fight those portal cards, and then those towers go away, and you have to refresh and restart once again. Uh, it's a very unique and interesting way. I've never actually seen a game do it in this way. Uh, I think for on one end, it's really cool because it allows you to reset and in the feeling of difficulty remains the same, no, regardless of the type of units you're having to deal with. And on the other end, it feels like you're working for something, you're trying to build up for something, and then you've lost it. So I can see that going either way. Or regardless, it's up to you as to how you want to formulate your own opinion on that matter. This game functions like a tower defense board game in which you're doing damage to tiles, but you're actually utilizing little Tetris pieces and trying to cover them up. So it's a half puzzle game, half strategy game uh, with a tower defense theme to it. You're placing down your little tiles on these spaces here, trying to cover them up to stop the enemy minions. And if you cover them up, you gain certain rewards, which you can utilize to gain towers. Uh, you do not want them to cross the border because you take a lot of damage and 
you can die rather quickly if you're not careful. Uh, also, another cool thing, too, is utilizing your characters. Your characters are, have a square base for a reason. They can fit on those tiles to damage the enemies. They can on certain ones. They can't on others. There's a lot of different tiles in the game that will uh, determine what you can do with them. You have the basic tiles here, which have the big guys, but otherwise pretty, pretty standard. You can have the ones like this one here, which have the double movement units, which means if you're utilizing something like a character on this space or one of those footmen, it will only move one space. Uh, and if it's your character, your character will get displaced and take a damage. If it's a footman, that footman will be removed. Uh, and if you have nobody on there, it'll move fast. And you don't want them to move fast. You want them to slow down as much as possible. And then you have spaces like these where your uh, certain heroes cannot utilize or be on these spaces here. Some of the spaces have little no footman spaces in which you cannot go on there. There's different tiles that will tell you what can and what cannot go on there and at what cost. So for instance, like I said, this one here, you have to have a certain level of tower even to place damage on it. Uh, and further along in the game, you're going to find boss cards, which you'll have to deal with these big baddies that you're going to have to uh, come across, like this big guy here. I think it even fits on the base here. Yeah, and it'll be moving along the track as well, attempting to uh, defeat you by getting across the board. Now, if you like tower defense games and you like puzzle games, this is going to be one uh, that's perfect for you. The high quality components, beautiful imagery, the artwork. This feels like uh, a tower defense game. It feels like uh, Kingdom Rush, and it feels like the app. You know what you're getting into when you start playing this board game if you previously enjoyed the app. Placing down the footman is really cool because it's what you do in the app you place a tower down and those little footmen come out and they kind of like fight and defend you as long as possible before they get utterly demolished but it's enough of a slowdown to let your towers do the work and your towers do a lot of work especially as you level them up. The amount of different scenarios in this campaign is astonishing. There's a ton and there's also a ton of additional content if you want to pick it up on the expansions. I like the little added bonus of giving us this little sheet here and then also giving us stickers as we complete it. So this one here you can actually three star certain maps and you'll use these stickers on there uh, so you can play them at harder difficulties if you want. You can go back and try and create a harder challenge for yourself or uh, as you get better you'll be able to do a better job of beating it and having those stickers are just kind of a nice little reminder so it has a semi-legacy component to it but otherwise it's completely replayable and there's also singular one-shot scenarios you can do uh, which you can just go ahead and set up and play. Each of the characters functions differently they have their own unique basic attacks and special attacks that they'll gain throughout the different campaign modes utilizing those to stop the monsters from getting through damaging your base. Uh, you have the little archer and she has her little cat that moves through. All of the characters work together congruently this is as cooperative of a game as it gets and it's challenging like I said that's the most important aspect of the game is just to be aware that this game is going to be a challenge it's going to be difficult to stop the minions and you have to use your best thoughts uh, the best thoughts as you possibly can so overall really really enjoyable game I don't even remember what I said previously but I if I enjoyed it then I do enjoy it now if I didn't like it as much then I do like it now uh, a couple caveats one is the rule book is pretty in depth which is good but also it's 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 heavy you need to actually sit down and read this rule book before you get into a game with your friends and family it'll probably take you about an hour an hour and a half to figure out how everything is set up hopefully with this video it gives you a little bit of an understanding of what is to be done but you still need to go into that rule book and fully flesh out how to play the game and of course the scenarios you have to go through each of the scenarios separately individually see what you need to do to win how to win and also uh two other little things one of them is the rift cards these guys it was really i don't know why i had to read this like section three or four times to understand how this worked because it's so nasty certain characters can't go on it you have to have certain towers to get it if you do not get this through you can take damage it's this little section but for some reason just the rules were just uh, in my mind not so not, not so straightforward but when callie read it no big deal. So I, I, I don't know what to tell you there. <laughs> but, uh, the, oh, and the, and the other thing is if you're not careful and you pass too many cards to other players, these guys are going to get out of hand rather quickly. You need to be conservative yet still choose to upgrade uh, depending on the scenario. There's a ton of different choices you're going to have to make and each one of them can be detrimental to you uh, individually with one person if you're not uh, going through the game as, as it kind of needs you to do so. Not worrying about specific tiles over others and going and dealing with your objective. It's not always about just simply destroying all of the tiles. 
tiles. You have to focus on certain ones depending on what it's asking you to do. Uh, regardless though, like I said before, enjoyable game. Really had fun with this one. If you like tower defense games, if you like puzzle games and you want a mix of that with a fully cooperative game, Kingdom Rush is one I definitely suggest you take a look at. High quality components, beautiful. Everything was really cool in this game. I was really excited to see this one come out and they did an excellent job at it. Let me know what you think down below. Link in the description if it's something you'd want to pick up. Why or why not are these type of games for you? Uh, typically, I don't like puzzle games as much, but this is a tower defense game as well and it has that tactical choices placements and whatnot so it really got me involved and the, like the puzzle aspect for me was something that i kind of let callie okay what do, what do you think i should put this i like let her alpha game that part and i focused on where to place them where to move my units and how to use my abilities all right thank you for watching let's 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 do an outro now thank you so much for watching another unfiltered gamer board gamer of the game kingdom rush if you enjoyed this video check out those other videos here on youtube like subscribe and comment hit that bell notification button it greatly helps us out we do greatly appreciate it website as well unfilteredgamer.com blog post giveaways kickstarter list and more top five lists and we do other unique little interesting things especially on our discord we got a flea market we got an auction house uh we do secret santas different things for the different holidays and of course just banter on our live stream and our main hubs you can also check out our Patreon if you're interested in supporting us for a dollar do Helps us get out games, helps us with shipping costs and whatnot throughout the year. And we'd be grateful if you could. We try and update that at least once a month or so just to say thank you and give you guys a little heads up on what's coming up. I like reviews like this one and what's going on with our live stream. Up to you though. Uh, however, we do also have a live stream. We give away games or we play games there. It's a ton of fun. We play games just like this one every week wednesday 6 30 p.m pst if you're interested take a look at the stream and join us become a part of the community and have some fun maybe even win a game if you're lucky thank you guys so much for watching and as always i look forward to rushing the kingdom with you next time